Welcome to Ohm Times TV, a division of Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting. Welcome to What is Going Ohm for new thought from the edge of Ohm. Each week on Ohm Times flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought-provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello. In 2018, a physician, chemist, researcher, and undercover podcast host by the name of Baba Masha embarked on a four-year research project in which thousands of volunteers from all continents self-microdosed with a sacred psychoactive mushroom known as Amanita muscaria. The purpose of the project was to study the effects of microdoses of AM on the human body to determine its optimal dosages, the stability of its effects, its analgesic properties, and to document the range of diseases and conditions it might be able to help. It was the first international study on the medicinal effects of microdosing with Amanita muscaria and the results were eye-popping. Baba Masha MD joins me now to discuss the extraordinary results of her research documented in her book, Microdosing with Amanita Muscaria, Creativity, Healing and Recovery with the Sacred Mushroom. 
which shares how more than 3,000 volunteers experience such positive outcomes from a broad range of health conditions, ailments, pain and addictions that one can't help wondering if this sacred mushroom is the nearest thing we've ever found to a medicinal cure. Baba Masha, welcome. I'm glad to be here with you, Sandy. It was a long time. <laughs> you. Yes. We've waited a long time to have this conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, you're a paediatrician, an OBGYN with a doctorate in medicine and bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. And Baba Masha is not your real name. Rather, Baba Masha is what you call a virtual character that you created to broadcast a harm reduction podcast called Radio Psychedelics in Russian-speaking territories. You've been doing that since 2014. Mm -hmm. Before we talk about your studies with Amanita, I'd like to know a bit more about your psychedelics podcast and why you needed to broadcast under a pseudonym. Um, first part of my life, I was studying official medicine. Uh, it was 12 years of medical school with following practice. And um, I'm very proud of how medicine progressed over time. But this progress has two sides of a coin. So about 20 years ago, I switched to plants. First, just of my curiosity and some health problems, which I cannot resolve with official medicine. So I studied uh, psychedelic plants about it's over a decade. And I had amazing results. And I studied a lot of plants, basically everything what was available, and it was um, cannabis, ayahuasca, iboga, uh, psychedelic and non-psychedelic remedies. And um, after I have had my own experience, uh, in 2013, I opened a um, psychedelic podcast. And Baba Masha is my pen name. The closest English translation of Baba Masha is a Jane Doe. It's uh, some woman from nowhere. And it was a name of my podcast, uh, Radio Psychedelics with Baba Masha with Jane Doe. So the program, as you said, it was a harm reduction program for post-Soviet territories. Why did I do that? Because for the last 30 years, I live in the United States, and all information is available to us. We're so lucky. We can read about everything because we have freedom of speech. And on post-Soviet territories, uh, the major websites on psychedelic plants are not accessible. Uh, websites, forums is Iravid, Shroomery, map.org, and other, they're blocked. And young generation, they don't make any difference between taking designer drugs yeah. like synthetic catenones, so-called salt baths, and psychedelic plants. They don't know about um, high rate of uh, developing dependency. It could cause uh, organ damage, hormone imbalance, all kinds of diseases in their long-lasting consequences of taking designer drugs. That's why I opened my podcast on uh, medical benefits so in 2013 i was very first person who went public on post-soviet territories and started talk openly about psychedelic plants health benefits history medicinal use rule dosage set and settings including my own experience and i posted over 1400 1,400 uh, hours of my work, over 700 podcasts for 10 years. And um, it was interactive program. I created anonymous live chats on social media platform to discuss, discuss medicinal effects. And also I was running live streams about four, five, six hours conversation with uh, over 100,000 participants. I was doing it on different platforms, including Clubhouse, Telegram. And uh, then I start doing anonymous interviews with people 
with major questions like why do you take in psychedelic plants what did you expect what was before what results what is after that so i probably was doing good thing because uh russian federation government blocked my podcast in 2018 i opened another one they found me two years later <laughs> and blocked me in 2020 and uh I switched to social media Telegram and I opened over 20 channels on different plans separately. So they just blocked me in November. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of gave up. <laughs> I don't want to restore this information over and over because I published uh, two books and that's probably enough. So I yeah. shut down. I shut it down because I don't want to do it anymore. And um, um, in 2018, Amanita Mascaria came in my life. It was a kind of an accident. I didn't plan it because uh, in 2014, I read a book of uh, James Fediman on microdosing of magic mushrooms. I tried it on myself. It took me a couple years to document the results on myself and my close uh, people close to me. And then I announced it in 2016. And after that, I was loaded with information. People were writing me about taking microdoses of Amanita Mascaria. So in 2018, I built up the first group. It was 67 people. They were from different countries. They didn't know each other. I was talking with them weekly, documenting the results, and the information was so consistent. So I tried it myself. <laughs> I tried it myself, and it was such a pain relief because at that time I was suffering from excruciating pain, and it just uh, gave me a new start. And that's why I'm a believer, because it's changed my life. So I announced this. Uh, I announced the results, uh, which I collected from 67 people in February 2019. And by September, I already I, I had over 2,000 volunteers. So I built up a group. It looks as though um, that was, this, yeah, there, yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, so we, we lost connection there. So you built yeah, up a group. I built up a group and uh, by 2022, I had over 20,000 volunteers, right. which were taking Amanita Mascaria from 0.1 gram to 50 grams. I wrote a in 2020, I wrote a Russian book, which was basically results for first year of my research. And it was downloaded uh, over a quarter million times because I gave it for free to people who worked with me just to see what we achieved as a group. And uh, in 2020, uh, I uh, sold my book to the publisher and uh, the book was printed uh, in 2022. And uh, I think right now it's close to 100,000 sold copies at this moment. Wow. According to the check I received. <laughs> so why, what's so special about Amanita? You've tried all the others. You know, what is different about this particular plant? You know, each plant gives different results. It's, I cannot say Amanita is there is better than anything it's not we just did i did a systematic research on different plants it's not my first uh, project i studied marijuana i collected i had a whole questionnaire before i came to amanita i already collected data on different plants each plant gives certain results to people, to sick people. Let's say if we'll take Parkinson disease, we studied Parkinson disease of taking, uh, with taking Amanita, 
but I will tell you the better results with Parkinson's disease will be, my choice will be can cannabis. Because neither cannabis, neither uh, Amanita cures Parkinson, nothing cures Parkinson, but the quality of life could be improved, right? So cannabis, uh, microdosing of cannabis with uh, patients with Parkinson's disease, it removes tremor, it's clear the mind, we can, we, uh, it's, uh, um, elevate their mood, it's, they just feel better. Not so much with Amanita. I put here, uh, if you read um, how many diseases we studied, it's about 150 different condition, medical condition. It's not like Amanita cure all of them. We're talking about the condition. Because the question I put in my questionnaire with 150 medical conditions, is my condition is better, worse, or no results? We're not talking about cure. Let's say take psoriasis. Amanita doesn't cure psoriasis, but it puts psoriasis in a long, long six months remission, right? It doesn't cure, let's say, Alzheimer, but it makes quality of life better. And I think because Amanita is a very intriguing uh, mushroom. Amanita, uh, because uh, most studied Amanita muscaria chemicals are ibotenic acid and muscimol, and we are uh, anal analogs of primary neurotransmitters in mammal central nervous system. There is no mushroom which has the same chemical properties. That's why. So I think what, first of all, Amanita muscaria gives people some mental balance and all comes from here because most diseases are comes from here. So, but it's not only ibotenic acid and muscimol. Amanita has over hundred chemical compounds. It's in a trace amount, but still when we microdose, because my manita microdosing is not taking big doses. For four years of study, I find out we need to take it very small dosages from 0.1 to half gram, not more than one gram a day, but regularly, consistently, and it gives you much better results when people take big doses randomly because it doesn't do anything. But we have a lot of uh, different chemicals, different ingredients in Amanita muscaria and the same ingredients we can find in our plants. Let's say uh, betalamic acid in halin, um, all kinds of, uh, because Plants were intersect in chemical compounds. That's Amanita muscaria doesn't stay aside in better than anything. You know, if you, when I was taking care of my mental problems, I tried everything and I found this plant affects this, this plant affects that. So it's have to be a combination because uh, Amanita muscaria is not um, cure for everything. Like some people say, oh, I'll take Amanita no. Muscaria and I'm going to have immortality and I'm going to be young and beautiful. No, it's, it's, uh, it's just certain plans for certain conditions. That's what when my you, opinion. When you read the book and you've got over 800 um, empirical, personal uh, reports from people who were part of participants in the study and when you read these you think oh my god it's helped that person's migraine it's helped that person's you know Crohn's disease it's helped this person with you know hormonal problems and and it reads as though it is a cure-all because it seems to help everything. There is difference there's big difference between cure and alleviating the symptoms it's yeah. a big big difference that's what people mix let's say let's say i uh, give uh, i treat my husband uh, last year on christmas he broke his leg uh, on mountain 
trails scheme and I cured him with Amanita. We didn't take any painkillers and his uh, leg uh, um, uh, swelled and it was excruciating pain and I treat him with Amanita tincture. Amanita took inflammation, it took uh, uh, the swelling and it took the pain away, but it didn't cure the problem because the broken bones were not cured with Amanita. See my point? Mm. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. But we were doing month by month, week by week, month by month, because uh, after 10 days of surgery, his leg was that big. And I have it all documented. And when we were taking uh, stitches in the doctor's office, his uh, leg was so big. And I saw in uh, his doctor's eyes, he was a great surgeon, but he didn't know what to do to take the swelling. I said, don't worry about it. I brought my husband home from the hospital. I took all these uh, wraps. I wrap it with Amanita tincture. I, I made the overnight complex. And eight, years, eight, eight hours later, I took the photograph and I sent it to doctor. Doctor blocked me <laughs> because, <laughs> because he thought I did a Photoshop. <laughs> I understand him. I totally understand. He is a medical professional. If, and if like 40 years ago, when I was sitting in my office, some woman will come to me and say, oh, Baba Masha, there is someone I say, okay, security, <laughs> take her away. I understand him, but that's what the results. Yeah. It took, but at it, 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 uh, it, the evening, it, it's all come back, the pain come back, the uh, swelling come back. So I wrapped it again and we did it consistently. I took him from uh, painkillers, from opioids. He was taking it first 10 days. So we were maintaining this with Amanita, but it didn't cure his uh, broken uh, leg. Right. No, when you look at some of the, you know, the effects, um, the conditions, you've got mood enhancer, addictions, yes. um, Crohn's yeah. disease, um, you know, vision, color perception and vis vision as well. I mean, autism, how is it helping all of those things? Cindy, the, all the questions I put, we were studying it and some of them was not successful. Uh, Amanita muscaria doesn't cure Crohn's disease. Just people have general improvement in their condition. When they take an Amanita, they feel easy they feel more happy they it's enhance their mood i have several several uh, numbers of uh, where is amanita wins over any plant let's say sleep restoration amanita muscaria is not sleeping pill it's restore your sleep after three weeks one month of taking amanita muscaria people are able to sleep without anything. It's restore the biological clock. The trick is of uh, in taking Amanita Mascaria is a sleep and restoration remedy. You have to go sleep by 9.30, by your biological clock. If you take Amanita and go sleep at midnight or two in the morning, it does work this way, right? So in the sleep restoration is 76%. Depression, 80%. Uh, using tincture and muscular spasms, 86%. HDD, 88%. You know, and no side effects. Hot flashes, 80%. Panic attacks, 87%. Neuropathic pain, 87%. Epilepsy, 82 uh, Using tincture for skin burns, 84 eczema 82 pain relief tincture in general any pain migraine pain arthritis arthritis any pain trauma broken bones it's 89 percent it's a big number even you divide it by two it's still big it's a big number absolutely it's a big number with no side effects no side effects and the most important and surprising thing which we discovered is a group because it was not no such information at all it's um 
amanita macrodosin is a dependency antidote because uh, a lot of people were reaching me and saying oh this is placebo blah 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 forget it there is no placebo for alcoholics there is none so i have 86 percent and only 12 percent from that group over 800 people of using alcohol oh my god my my dogs um only 12 percent of people who were heavily using alcohol returned to previous state so opioids methadone fentanyl oxycodone heroin 74 designer drugs buff salts 89 amphetamine 79 and it's a uh, it was a uh, discovery of a positive effect Amanita Mascaria on various drug addiction during this project development was a really good surprise because Amanita Mascaria also challenged unhealthy thoughts and behavior associated with drug abuse, according to the information I collected with data in my project, because people, it's changing their mind. They don't want to drink. It's just don't want to drink they think okay i'm gonna go buy beer or wine or and they find out themselves in a place i don't want to go so it's change behavior because it affects the same receptors the alcohol is a downer for the same receptors and amanita is lifting and uh, it's kind of a replacing therapy i think but i don't want to go in the theories because I want to represent the facts I collected. I don't want to put the theories, explanation why could be anything, but I just want to present what I found. So people were self-medicating, following advice, but self-medicating. Um, and then they were, you know, writing their reports based on what they felt. Um, how do you know that you can rely on the things that they said? Because right in the beginning of my project, I created two live chats and it was 8,000 people involved. And uh, it, I was running it 24 seven with my associate Thomas. He was running one live chat and I was running another one. We have like 4,000 people in each and people were writing daily I took, let's say, two grams. I don't feel good. Okay, decrease your dose. Take like po uh, half gram. It, uh, what's going on? People was writing about their effects life. Plus, from those 3,000 people, I probably talk with everybody personally, myself. And because they did not know each other, and they were giving me information separately. They can, you cannot lie about these things because you talk, it, it's not like I talk with a person. I said, okay, tell me what's going on, blah, blah, blah. I'm a doctor. I know how to fish information because most people say, oh, it doesn't work for me. But when you start asking simple question, how was your day going? Did you get <sighs> AA? My dog's going crazy how was your day did you feel good did you get angry how was your work did you get upset what did you do did you go for a walk so you just ask very normal questions and uh because i'm professional i know how to talk with people to get information and i was talking with them personally and it was anonymous uh, research for everybody not for me because uh for 10 years of my research on different plants, I talk with thousands and thousands of people. It was too much work. Now when I stop my podcast, I just want to sit in the silence. I don't want to talk with anybody anymore. <laughs> I just want to go away. We're going to take a short break now, Baba. All right. Um, we'll be back in a few moments with more questions. I've got lots more questions. You're listening to what is going on. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and my guest today is physician, chemist, researcher, author, and undercover podcast host, Baba Masha. And we're talking about her book, Microdosing with Amanita Muscaria, 
creativity, healing and recovery with the sacred mushroom. We'll be back with more in a few moments. Stay tuned. Om Times TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Om Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times flagship radio show, What is Going On? And as an author, editor, and 13 times book judge who's read thousands of books and interviewed hundreds of authors, I'm constantly asked what's really worth reading and what's not. So I created the No BS Spiritual Book Club to help you save time and money by picking the brains of discerning names who have walked this path before you. There's no catch, no fees, and no BS, just an ever growing library of 10 best spiritual book lists from some of your favourite authors and teachers plus free book excerpts, audios and video interviews with people like Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., David G., Lee Harris, Mark Nepo and more. From well-known classics to hidden gems you've never heard of, it's the only no BS guide to the best spiritual books to enlighten your journey of self-discovery. So why not join the club, get inspired and save money at the nobsspiritualbookclub.com. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back. Baba Masha, in addition to all of these ailments and conditions that it was helping with, it's also been shown to enhance creativity and sports performance. It looks as though we've got another little freeze on the screen. Yes. Yes. Ah, here we've had a, another glitch in the connection. Did you hear what I said? Uh, no, I, uh, it was uh, okay. frozen. I was saying that in addition to all of the ailments and conditions that it's helping with, um, it also enhances creativity and sports performance. Yes. I want to answer on your previous question about how did I know with uh, my uh, volunteer team line. I, okay. built up, I built up a group of people here in the United States, which I know personally, and I was practicing with small microdoses on them without telling me what it is. Let's say uh, I had a guest and she had a big wound on her leg and she was suffering from pain. And I said, let me do the compress. She said, what is it? I said, oh, don't bother. I'll just do it. We did it overnight. She woke up in the morning. She even didn't, she forgot she had pain. I have I had another guest. She was um, her husband died. She was uh, very deep, uh, grieving, depressed, and and I start giving her microdoses. I said, take this every morning, three four days. She was like, ah, she was still grieving, but not to that point. I built up a group over hundred people around me, just watching the results. Plus, a stop. <laughs> Plus, I was treating my dogs. I have four dogs, and one of them are really, really old Rottweiler, and she's suffering from arthritis, in pain, crying, couldn't sleep. 
I was trying it on her. She does know what it is. She does know what placebo is. And I was watching her. She could, when I got here, she was 10 years old. She could walk. Now we go for five miles. She does have pain and she does know it's Amanita Mascari. Treating her every day. I did uh, short courses. I was combining cannabis oil and uh, Amanita Mascaria separately, see what's better for her. And we got uh, over six, seven months, we got great results. She lost weight, she's healthy, she's like brand new dog. So one takes it as a course, one doesn't have to keep on taking it to maintain the effects. In my opinion, is um, it's supposed to be seasonal. You know, Amanita is not the pill, like, let's say, high blood pressure pill, you have to take it constantly. It can improve your, uh, someone's health to the point. It could do certain improvement, but it can cure, the, let's say, all the diseases we I listed here uh, about 150 diseases. And um, let's say here in the page, what page is 60, right? Here, see the photograph. This is the person I know, it's my neighbor. She was scheduled for a surgery with goiter and her neck was like this. And she was helping me in uh, testing my English writing <laughs> of my book before I submitted it to the publisher. She was coming and reading all the uh, um, letters, how I translated it from Russian to English. And after reading about 100 or 200 letters, she said, Masha, I want it. Give it to me. I said, why? I want to quit smoking, I have alcohol problems, I'm depressed, just give it to me. And I said, all right. So I did. She used it for three weeks. And when I called her, I said, come over, we're going to do the next portion <clears throat> of my book. And she walked in my room, you know, I'm a trained doctor, and I look on her neck and I said, do you know your tumor shrunk, shrink? Do you know it's smaller? She said, yeah. I said, what's going on? I said, Let's do it. Let's monitor. So I measured her neck. I was giving her um, dry amanita. She was taking it in the morning. And then for a night, we were uh, doing uh, amanita tincture compress. So her surgery was postponed because of COVID. And after COVID was gone, she didn't need a surgery. Right now, when you look at her, you can't see that tumor but I have a picture of it it's documented it cannot be for me because I I proved it to myself and I don't want to prove it to anybody I just wrote what I collected and I don't want to say trust me people take it because I'm not promoting any new products I'm not, not selling uh, anything no I'm not no. selling anything I'm not selling oh take Amanita or I'm not for uh uh, open new business. I was contacted with a lot of people because when I started, nobody was talking about Amanita microdosis in 2019. Now with so many people selling it, and I got, uh, I approached, I, I was approached by several business companies, and I said, "What do you want from me?" We wanna be. Uh, we wanna take you as a as a face of our company. I said, no, forget it. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you produce. Oh, we do the concentrated uh, musimol blah, blah. I said, no, I don't gonna be face of your company. We just wanna. We will pay you money just talking because you know uh, more than anybody about Amanita. I said, no, forget it. I'm not uh, going for business. I just wrote the book what I discovered, period, that's it. That's why if I would sell the product and say, Cindy, there is a good product, take it, and I have to prove it to you it, work, it works, right? I'm not. Yeah. You, you try and you tell me if it works for you or not. If it yeah. works, it's good, if not, because it doesn't work for everybody. That's why we have a percentage of people 
they say in my question, no results, no results. It's a small uh, group of people saying no results, but we have people mm. like that. And you do offer, um, you offer information. You tell people about yeah. the plant. You tell them where they can find it. You tell them how they can make tinctures or ointments or, you know, uh, something they could have with milk or powder. Yeah. 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 We created a protocol of microdosing. We created a protocol for four years of my research. We find out how much, how long, do you take it when, how to collect, how to harvest, the storage, the method in, uh, in uh, what do you do? Because Amanita is not for lazy people. You have to get up, you have to go in the forest, you have to collect some mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a much. You, you need like 10, five, seven cups to do the course or two, because Amanita lose, uh, loses its property over time. About six, seven months, you cannot use it, and it's seasonal, you know. And uh, we created the protocol because when we started, we didn't know anything. We didn't know how much to take. So we started with two grams, three grams, and it was just too much. Over four years, we decreased the dose drastically. So it's from 1.0 to 0.5, not more than one gram. How do we take it? Because... If you take Amanita in the morning or at the evening, it will be different results. And it's proven because we were live chatting with people. Let's say people take it in the morning on empty stomach. It's very important to take it in an in uh, empty stomach because pH of uh, our... Um, pH in our stomach in the morning is 2.7. And it's better, it's like you're taking Amanita with lemon acid because it's have to be that kind of pH to improve uh, the digestion. So it, it's it's acting like energy drink, mood regulator, motivator, uh, analgetic. You feel full of energy, you work, you, you don't have this chatterbox talking in your head and it's enhancing your mood. But if you take the same dose at the evening, you get sleepy right away in half an hour. Not after you eat, before your dinner. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. example, season here in California right now, I just collected a um, whole box of amanitas and I start microdosing. I don't have any conditions to tell you the truth, but I still microdose three, four weeks just for prophylactic, I take it at 7 p.m. in the hour. I start yawning and I go sleep. I have good dreams. I don't wake up. And in the morning, I'm all energetic and happy. Can one overdose on it? Overdose is um, because uh, Amanita has uh, some psychedelic uh, properties. And if Amanita is ingested for psychoactive experience uh, the manifestations occur uh, within two hours and it's um, cause drowsiness hallucinations dysphoria dizziness delirium and uh, ataxia uh, hall uh, hallucination and it's not good to take amanita in big doses because let's say we talk about magic mushrooms and psychoactive uh, conditions uh, with so-called trips. There's a certain dose which affect people from three to five grams. With Amanita, nobody knows. It's strictly individual. Individual. Some people can take five grams, and it's a, a Amanita mascara is dissociative. It's a psychoactive mushroom but it's caused dissociation which means when you take this certain dose from 5 to 20 grams your body and mind disconnecting at some point and mind goes somewhere yes you have you can have psychedelic experience some enlightened blah 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 but your the body left alone 
is getting aggressive toward itself. So people, we don't know who we are. We don't know where we are. We're totally uncontrollable. We start. Uh, uh, we just think in their dreams. We can go through the walls, or we can fly, and it co can cause physical damage. Not because people gonna die from Amanita, because they can kill themselves when they're out. That's the danger of Amanita. And I don't advise to anybody try that as a psychoactive agent because it's really danger dangerous. But uh, in my study, I have several people who took uh, about 50 grams or more dry mushroom. They didn't die, but they didn't have very good experience because they have broken bones, broken forehead, all in wounds. They find out themselves in blood, urine, destroyed, totally destroyed house. That's a not very good psychoactive experience because if people take ayahuasca or magic mushrooms, when you ask them during the trip, what's your name? What year you was born? What's the name of your mother? They, they can tell you. With Amanita, we're out. It's a psychosis. It's dis disconnection from your mind. And they could see you as a monster and start fighting you as well. That's yeah. a real dangerous mushroom in so big doses. Be very careful. Yeah. yeah. Is it legal? Is it legal to pick them, create yeah. your own yeah. doses? Yeah. Yeah. It it's uh, illegal in Australia, Romania, uh, Holland, Holland, and I think that's it. Three countries, three, maybe, maybe some more. But you know, in Japan, we eat amanita as a regular mushrooms because uh, I eat uh, amanita in big quantities as well. You just have to know how to prepare it. Uh, you have to soak it in uh, water for 48 hours because all uh, amanita chemical compounds, ingredients, were water soluble. And if you uh, cut them in small pieces, put it in a big jar, change the water constantly 48 hours, so you just cook them in regular mushrooms. A lot of people eating them uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, in Japan, they eat it just regular mushrooms. And they are real tasty, you know, uh, when you take out all the psychoactive stuff. Why do you think some mushrooms have properties and others, I mean, you know, I buy shiitake mushrooms in my supermarket and I, I eat quite a lot of them and I've never had, you know, any effects that I'm aware of. What is the difference? You know, why? You know, right now, uh, there is a lot of confusion in the mass media because of money. People start uh, saying, oh, shiitake, shiitake, shiitake. They grown it in some basement on very poison uh, substrate and they sell it to people is a remedy people taking it so oh i don't feel anything yeah because uh mushrooms uh, could be uh, act, uh, active and help people if they grow in a very real in environment but when you grow those mushrooms in a basement with no light on some poison substrate you know you cut all the poison from a substrate it goes in the mushrooms because mushrooms are famous for sucking all the chemicals out of um, environment where we grow. Not just amanita. Let's say amanita was studied for um, collecting uh, heavy metals. That's why it's very important to collect your mushrooms in the area which is chemically, chemically clean. But if it's some factory with uh, some bad, uh, bad uh, environment, Let's say vanadium level in Amanita muscaria is sky rise. So me personally, I go for five, six, six hours driving in the area like national park. There's no people for miles and miles and miles. There's no people, no factories, no roads. That's where I collect my mushrooms. I even have one friend, he bought my book, he uh, bought some Amanita online, took it, and he said, I don't feel anything. I said, listen, I wrote in my book, don't buy anything over internet. You don't know who picked them up. You don't know where they...
It looks as though we've had another. You don't know how bit. old was Mark. How do you know? Because you you even don't know what you buy. Uh, yeah, and it's cost a lot of money. But in reality, you have to think straight. You don't know what you buy at all. Yeah. In, no, absolutely. You don't know yeah. what you're buying, and you don't know how old it is. Right. And then uh, this uh, season, about uh, three weeks ago, I collected my own mushrooms. I made them only 15 grams of dry. 15 grams is enough for a month for taking a manita. And I gave them that powder and I said, take it half gram in the morning, half gram uh, at the evening and write me a report. If it nothing happened, just write me a report, nothing happened. He took it about a week. He started feeling better. He's 74 years old. And I asked him specifically, what do you expect? What do you want? He said, I want more energy. I want a better sleep. I want a better mood. I want to be more active. He got it because it was fresh from the forest. I dried it. I put it through my coffee grinder. I give it to him and they were fresh and it worked. It works. And whatever he bought for $100 over internet, he, you can harm yourself easily by some unknown substance, even if it looks good and doesn't matter what people say. Mm. Because, um, you know, we start believing in advertising, you know, like uh, a very popular, uh, it's very popular right now to buy some buds and they say, oh, it can improve your brain. It's going to give you this and that and that. And, and it's people buying it in millions. And it didn't, Nobody approved it. Nobody checked what is in. Hello? Why are you believing in some letters on a box? Even it says on a box it's going to do this, this, and this. First, we don't know what's inside. Even though it's what they claim, we don't know if our body can digest that form they put it in that box. Mm. So it's real complicated. And... Um, I have my own uh, strict, uh, strict uh, things what I follow. And you know, Sandy, I'm 70 years old. I have nothing on my disease list, none. I don't take any pills. And recently I went to check my vision and my physician, oh, let's get your blood pressure. Forget it, just don't touch me. How, am I, how much aspirin do you take? I don't take aspirin. How much? Do, what, what is it? What pills do you take? None. Why? The question is why? My Did you tell him why? <laughs> I didn't. I don't want to even get in that conversation. I said, give me the uh, reference uh, to my uh, to the, uh, eye doctor. I don't want to even talk with you about it. And she's like, why you don't take aspirin? Because <laughs> it's very yeah. strange, you know? Yeah. I you run know, my, I'm sorry, I, I run my test, reg, test regularly uh, in, in my age, all my uh, blood tests, everything. I go to different country, I test all my, perfect. It's just in, in the range of 30, 40 years old, you know, mm -hmm. I don't need to take aspirin. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay. Um, a question about, um, you know, People talk about ayahuasca and they talk about the the lady, you know, the mother, the the energy of the plant, a feminine energy, and many people say they see her. Um, is there something associated with Amanita? I mean, do you believe that this plant is conscious? Do you believe that it has some kind of guiding energy that yes. works with it? Yes, it is. I was taking ayahuasca for 10 years, every six months. I got a research group based on uh, San Francisco uh, uh, Institute. It was um, some medical professionals and people were researching it for over 60 years. And I trusted them because I'm not going to go to some shaman in the jungle and take ayahuasca. It's not my style. So I was... Uh, doing it uh, in a group of researchers and it's true i didn't believe in it at all sandy it's very hard for me to believe so when i came first time in a group 
of 15 people and we start saying about intention, power, da, da, da. I was like, oh my God. But, <laughs> but when I took it, in the first part of my life, because I was a physician, I don't believe in those things, you know? And when I met personally everything what I was dismissing from my life, uh, I didn't have any health issues by that time. And before you go, you have to tell uh, people around you what's your intention. And they say, why are you going there, Masha? I said, because I want to know what it is. And it was so strange for me. It's improved me drastically, you know. It took my aggression away. It's, it's show me what love means physically. It's very hard to explain because you cannot translate it on a human language, what you experience. But the visions I have, the mood what I had, and I could monitor myself, what's going on with my body. You feel such a lightness. You feel such a crisp, your crispy brain. It's all, you come out of an uh, ayahuasca trip. It lasts three, four, up to six months. Your color perception, perception of the world, perception of the people you love, you, start, you become much more softer. You start care about them. You don't have all these moods up and down. You care yeah. about people. You're such a soft. And it's really, really great experience. That's how I started. The ayahuasca pushed me this direction. And when I start going to that direction, studying as a doctor, because I can observe the changes yeah. in my life. I, I did. But Amanita doesn't do that. No. No, no, no. no. Amanita in this, uh, I will put it between the plants I tried. And I have to tell you, I tried a lot. I tried um, cleansing um, uh, kamba, poison frog. I tried uh, all kind of uh, remedies, shamanic remedies, psychedelic and non-psychedelic. And each of them has certain qualities we can use. If you use it in moderation, if you know why you're using it, and it's not just one substance like Amanita, you have to take several different plants to maintain your brain and body. And it's a lifestyle. Because if people drink on the weekends, take drugs, dance all night, watch TV, eat garbage food, don't exercise if they take a manita or not. It doesn't make any difference for them yeah. at all. We are actually almost out of time now. Um, so what would you, one piece of advice you would give people who are considering trying a manita? What would it be? Be careful. Go collect it yourself. Don't trust anybody. Don't buy it over internet. If you want to try it, don't be lazy. Go get it. And I have a protocol in that book. I have everything. I have protocol, how to store, how to collect, how to take it, try it. If it works for you, that's good. If not, get it. Look for something else. Because there is a lot of plants and our medicine is was based on plants. Yes. We just switched to pure chemicals now, but it was based on plants Yeah. initially. That's my advice. Thank you. Baba Masha, thank you for joining us today. It's been most interesting. You're welcome. Microdosing with Amanita Muscaria, creative healing and creativity healing and recovery with the sacred mushroom is published by Park Street Press, a division of Inner Traditions and Company, and it can be purchased directly from the Inner Traditions website and from online bookstores. And um, you can still see Baba Masha's podcast with English subtitles on YouTube at Amanita Microdosing Baba Masha, or one word. Before we close, if you prefer the flexibility of listening to, to viewing, this show is also available as a podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Google, Audible, all the major podcast platforms and at hometimes.com. That's it for this week. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. I'll be back 
with another edition of what is going on at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me. And thank you again to Baba Masha. Thank you, Sandy. You have a good day. <laughs>